Welcome to our lesson about punching in and out. This is a really handy feature which lets you replace a section of a take while hearing your previous take. In this lesson, we're going to be learning how to punch in and out of an audio track. If there are instrument reverb trails in the part that you want to redo, it's a better idea to do the second take on another track and then crossfade it in and out of your main take. Otherwise, you could end up with a disjointed sound. This doesn't mean that you can't do really tight punching in and out. It's just that you need to set the locators very precisely, right down to the sample level. And even so, the take might have a different rhythm or something that the punch in and out locators don't catch. If you punch in and out really tight like this, be prepared to do some possible sample editing or warping to repair any disconnected sounds. When you punch in and out, Cubase will start and stop recording where you set the left and right locators. Ideal places for punching in and out are where you have just a few notes to play and where you don't have instrument reverb trails to deal with. For vocals, it's better to punch in and out at the end and beginning of phrases. First thing I'm going to do is set the locators around the phrase that I'll be punching in and out. I want to replace the first phrase that I recorded for the cello. I'm going to drag the locators to their approximate positions at this zoom level, zoom full. Now I'm going to zoom in to position the locators more precisely. An ideal place to punch out would be where the wavelength is at zero. As you can see, there are some instrument reverb trails here. Let's zoom back out and let's actually zoom to the locators. Here are the buttons for activating the punch in and out features. They are white when they're enabled. Alternatively, since I'm recording from the beginning of the piece, I don't actually need to activate the left punch in button. I can just position the cursor at the beginning when I start. Once the punch in and out buttons are active, I need to ensure that the track I'm recording on is record enabled and that the monitor is on, if I want to hear my input monitor. Position the cursor before the punch in location, in our case return to zero, giving ourselves enough room so that we can match the rhythm and feel of the take. Now instead of pressing record, I'm going to press play. As soon as the cursor reaches the punch in point, Cubase automatically starts recording. And let's press stop. Notice that recording stopped at the punch out point, however, playback did continue. Let's have a listen. We just want to check on those reverb trails there. Disable the monitor. It is just slightly choppy. We might have to zoom in to the sample level to fix it. Apply some fading or cross fading. We won't cover sample editing in this lesson, however. Let's just zoom back out, out to the locators. And our punched in section appears overlap right on top of the previous take. Notice that the right punch out button's still active, but the left one's not. If you want to punch in again, you'll have to activate the left punch in button. And that's a setting you're able to change in the preferences dialog window. We'll talk about that near the end of this lesson. The punched in section overlaps the previous take because we're in what's called normal record mode. Let's show the record modes on the transport panel. Right click on any of the tools and ensure that record mode is selected. If we'd recorded this in replace mode, we wouldn't have an overlap here. We'd simply replace the previous event. Now let's say I wanted to redo the end section of this piece. I wouldn't need to set the right locator for the punch out point. I would just need to keep recording until I press stop. Let's position the locator. The left locator will need to be precisely positioned. 
All you need to do is make sure punch in is active and then press play to begin. But right now, instead of replacing the last phrase, I'm going to replace a couple of the phrases in the middle. Let me set the locators. A good place to start a punch in will be at the beginning of the groove event repeat. Bars 8, 17, etc. So I'm zooming in around bar 17. There's the beginning of the repeated phrase. Because of the reverb trails here, because of the reverb trails on this cello instrument, as an alternative, I could redo a take on another track and then crossfade the two events together. Let's check another potentially good place for punching in. Again, I'm looking for the end of a phrase, the beginning of the groove event repeat. Bar 25, let's zoom in here. See if we can find a spot with a zero wavelength. Okay, we can potentially work with something around here. Let's position the left locator. We'll do it manually by entering a value in this field. And then we'll drag the locator to make some finer adjustments. Here's a zero crossing point, that should do. Let's zoom back out. Zoom to locators. Now let's position the right locator with a drag. And let's put the cursor where we want playback to begin. Ensure that the punch in and out buttons are active. Let's press play. And let's press the space bar to stop our playback. You'll have noticed we didn't hear our input while we were recording, and that's because the monitor was off for this track. It's certainly possible to try it again with the monitor enabled. We can select and delete this take, or we could just record right over it, and then after we're done, audition each of the takes. Again, to prepare for punch in, position the cursor for playback. Activate punch in left. Punch out remained active. And press play to begin. Now with the monitor enabled, we won't hear playback before our punch in starts. However, we'll be able to follow the groove track. An alternative would be to create another audio track that's monitoring this input. Then you could monitor input through the second track and monitor playback through the existing track. If you're not using the punch in and out buttons and you find that while you're doing a take, Cubase stops recording sooner than you expected or for some reason doesn't start recording, Check the transport panel to make sure that punch in and out aren't enabled, and also that the cycle button's disabled. I've just activated the pre and post roll features. In the fields next to the buttons, we enter a time value in the units of primary display. Pre roll is how long Cubase will play back your work before entering record mode at the punch in location. Post roll refers to how long Cubase will continue playback after it's dropped out of record mode at the punch out location. So what the pre and post roll options do are save you a couple steps. Pre and post roll can help you with your timing and they also can help to further automate the punch in and out procedure. First of all, get set up for punching in and out. Activate the punch in toggle and the punch out toggle. Then activate the pre and post roll buttons. In the fields to the left of the pre and post roll buttons, enter a value for the pre roll, let's say two bars. I'll enter two and press enter. And two bars post. Now let's position the left and right locators roughly around the third phrase of this piece. Let's drag to approximately bar 17, up through 25. Now let's zoom in closely to set that punch in location more precisely. As we've discussed previously, a zero crossing point is preferable where the wavelength touches the middle line. This will minimize the possibility of clicking or any other distortion. Here we go. Let's drag to this zero point. Now let's set the right locator.
We'll zoom in closely. Okay. And zoom to locators. Let's position the cursor before the left locator. Let's disable the monitor, and then when you're ready, press play to start. And we jump back the two bars. Stop our playback. There's some additional settings that I'd like to talk about now. If you want Cubase to stop playing automatically after the punch out time, go to Preferences, Transport Branch. If you uncheck this option, then Punch In won't be deactivated when you stop playback. If you want to stop playback after automatic punch out, You'll need to check this box. These preferences supersede the punch in and out options on the transport panel. One more note, make sure that clicks are disabled, otherwise Cubase will use the metronome's pre-count settings rather than the pre-roll setting. And this concludes our tutorial about punching in and out.